All right, good morning, everybody. I am just getting set up here quick, pulling it up on my computer to be sure that everything looks good, sounds good. Okay. Things are looking perfect. All right, so hello and welcome to today's tutorial. We are going to be painting this watercolor bunny and I'm so excited. The reason why I am painting this bunny is because I have created a YouTube video that's going to go live later this today. And it is going to show you a variety of ways on how to DIY and transform the bunny into a variety of projects that you can do right at home um, for, with very minimal supplies and very very affordable projects. So here is a tea towel. Isn't that so cute? And then the napkins as well as creating this little cookie tag. So in the video, I am going to show you step by step how to create these DIY projects. But just today we are going to go in depth on how to paint this bunny here, which will only take us about, I'd say 20 or so minutes. And the replay will be available here as well as onto YouTube. So if you can't make it right now, I um, will have that here for you to paint at any time that you can. Um, I know Easter is right around the corner, so I am quickly trying to get this out for you guys in hopes that you'll do some of these DIY projects. I just really want to be able to start doing more DIY stuff that can show you how to transform your paintings into more products. Um, the products that I'll create in this video will not be ones that I would recommend or ways to recommend on how to mass create and sell, but for just doing simple projects at home, um, this is a really fun idea for you guys to be able to take your paintings. So it'll go beyond just this specific Easter idea. You could do this with any illustration. All right, so here is the cute bunny that I already did this week, and I have included a printable outline. So if you're new here, I always provide this free printable outline that you can print directly onto your watercolor paper. Makes it super handy if you have a printer at home, and uh, otherwise you could just trace it right onto your, um, your watercolor paper. And that way you don't have to feel intimidated about sketching, and we can just get started painting right away. I have this palette of about six to eight colors, and it is my go-to palette for when I go to paint. Um, oh, hi, Kels. Hold on. <laughs> I'm so glad that you guys are here, and I hope you guys can do these projects before Easter, Easter is here <laughs> in a, only a week. So, But anyway, so the palette that I'm using is the one that I love to use for pet portraits, actually. So it's a variety of yellows and browns, reds, and then Payne's gray. And then I also have this Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White, and it's I use this pretty much with every painting I create, especially with my pet portraits. So a bunny naturally is going to be really similar to painting a cat or a dog. Um, so you could also use white gouache. It's really similar to this um, paint, but you want something that's opaque that will stand out. And then the variety of brushes I'm using are ranging anywhere from a size six down to a triple zero liner brush. And then of course you'll want a paper towel and a water jar. And then the reference I'm using is one that I found off of Pixabay, which is a commercial free to use license um, reference images. So I always grab my reference images from there because you want to make sure that they are royalty free. All right, so let me just go ahead and set this here. I'm trying to make sure that you guys can see that bunny and my supplies. You won't be able to see my reference photo, so I'm just going to do it like this. Too much to fit into one tiny little frame here. Okay, so my paint is out of a tube. You might have a cake set. Either way, they're likely dry paints right now, so we're just going to get them activated. And specifically, I'll be using the Payne's Gray right here the yellow ochre, 
and a Van Dyke Brown. Looks like I should have poured a little bit more out, but don't need that much. And then a Burnt Sienna. And as well as a red. So this is the Alzerian Crimson. Most of my paints are Winsor & Newton. I have a little bit of a variety of brands here, but um, Winsor & Newton usually is my go-to. All right, so now my paints are activated and wet here. We are first going to begin by doing the lightest layer of the bunny. So that would be the light tan, so burnt sienna, as well as a little yellow ochre, and then a little Van Dyke Brown just to help mute it so it's not super yellow, and mostly water, a little bit of paint. We'll just begin. So even that was too much. I'm just going to pick up a little more water, dab my paper towel. We're just going to push that around. We're just going to get a nice base layer here, as well as into the ears. I'm going to leave the middle open just because that will be the red. So I'm just using my size six brush to um, try and cover a little bit of ground and picking up more water just to push that around as well. Doesn't have to be perfect right now. The one thing that I would recommend is trying to leave lighter areas. So like below here in the tummy as well as in the chest area. So I'm just going to leave that white. So this is a great beginner tutorial that if you aren't super comfortable with watercolor, we are doing this more of a light, fast sketch because once we really don't need a super detailed painting for these projects. So again, I'm just going to try and leave a little bit of the chest there um, light. And just paint a few strokes down below here in the feet. Okay, so there is that very first layer. You can tell, like you can even see watercolor magic happening here in the middle of the bunny there with the wet um, water expanding with the paint. So layer one, and it's going to be wet as we go back in now for our next layer, which will be with the um, Payne's Gray as well as the Van Dyke Brown. We want kind of a cooler color right now, kind of a grayish cool color. And dabbing it on my paper towel, you don't need a lot. We'll start with some of the darker areas. So right where the head creases into the body, we'll drop that in and it's going to expand. You can even help push some of those paint strokes around. Again, same amount on our brush. We'll just do a little bit of brush strokes towards the top here. And again, it's not expanding too far just because I didn't have a super wet brush on that first layer. We're just adding in a little bit just to be able to control a little bit where it's going. Right here around the leg crease. We'll add some down here below. It's looking like kind of a lot. So I'm just gonna pick up water on my brush and smooth it out. So again, doesn't have to be incredibly detailed and perfect. This is kind of more of a loose sketch. Let's see, we need to get some darker areas down here with the foot and the in the leg and the back. So Again, same color combo. I'm just using the Payne's Gray with a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown or any brown that you really have. And we'll just smooth that out. Use whatever's on my brush here for the lower half of this foot. All right, so I'm just gonna pause and show you what I have going on here so far. So some of the paint is expanding because it was applied to the wet background. 
and then some of it isn't because we didn't I did not have as much water and paint right there the head area again I'm just sticking with that same color combo um, is going to be a little more dry so I'll have a little bit more control over it again dabbing my paper towel I think I want a little bit more brown I want to warm this up a little bit so I'm gonna grab a little more of the brown, dab my paper towel, and then I am going to very carefully work around the eye. Seemed like kind of a lot, so I'll just get rid of that paint and dab my paper towel and smooth it out. And kind of round it up around the ears and around the forehead here. Again, does not need to be perfect. Let's add a little bit of that brown gray color up into the ears here. And then I'll take some and run it down and around the nose. Looks like I need a little bit of a darker spot up there on the forehead. Just going to smooth that part out with a little water. So again, my very few base layers are starting to add a little more dimension to the bunny. If there's anything you don't like, I would just take your brush. If you don't like some harsh lines, like I didn't really love that harsh line that the water was creating with the paint, I'll just smooth that out. Okay, so next let's do the ears. So the ear is a mixture of red, the inner part of the ear is a mixture of red and a little bit of yellow ochre and it's going to give us that peachy, warm, pinky color. Don't need a lot, it's pretty watery. I'm just going to drop it right in there. That was quite a bit, so I'm just going to dab my paper towel and then smooth it back out. Again, messy. Not perfect. So if you wanted to add a little dimension, you could just pick up a little bit more color. You could even pick up some burnt sienna and then just drop it in there with a little wet on wet technique. So what I'm doing is waiting for these layers that I just did to dry because I do want to add a little bit of detail with the sketch of the hairs on top, but I have to wait for the base layers to dry to do that. I think I didn't add a pink nose, but I'm going to do that for this little guy. So since I have a little bit left on my paintbrush here, I'm just going to dab it right around the nose area. Okay. So now the trick with watercolor is to be patient, which can be hard sometimes, which is why when I do a larger painting of an eight by 10 or 11 by 14 of a pet portrait, I work in areas. So I don't know if you've seen any time lapses. I'll usually work on a portion, then I bop over to the other ear and then I'll go down to the body. And then a lot of the times I leave the eyes for the very end, um, mostly because the eyes are always the hardest and they really matter the most. So, um, but otherwise when it, when I'm trying to just finish a painting in one sitting, I just m work around in different areas and let certain areas dry and then I'll go back and add more layers. Okay, it seems like this area for me is pretty dry and I didn't even hit the paint around that close to the eye. So what I'm going to do is move to a little bit of a smaller brush. This one is a size one. Um, if you have a size zero, that would also work really great. If you don't have the small of a brush, just be sure to grab um, whatever smallest brush you have that has a nice pointed tip to it. You can get a lot of detail with a, a pointed round brush, which is why that's all the type of brushes I ever use anyways, because they're super versatile. I am using just Payne's Gray. It's a super stark color, so I do not want that much paint on my brush. So. And not a lot of water either, so you want kind of 
a light amount of paint and water to your brush. So what I always do to be sure is dab my paper towel. And then careful where you set your hand, mine is dry. Um, we're just going to first begin by outlining the eye just to get our shape down. And then my goal is to try and leave a little bit of white for the shine. So just leaving that in there and just filling in the rest of the eye like that. We'll go back through and we can always add a darker outline. Um, but since this is a more loose painting of a bunny, this um, loose eye will be perfect. Okay, so let's start to add some of these uh, like hair loose strokes just so we can start to see a little dimension. I am going to use the same one that I was using to flood the background base layers. It's just this really soft bristle brush, um, size six. And it doesn't have a super fine tip to it, which is fine. I'm going to go back to using Payne's gray and then the brown. So I want kind of that gray mixture again. Dabbing on my paper towel, starting always where the area is the darkest, which is right here under the chin. And I'm just going to do some little brush strokes that kind of flare out. That even seems like a lot, so I'll just dab my paper towel. But yeah, and now we can go into the chest area here and start to go along the outline. Well, we're just showing a little bit of direction of the hair. Again, dab our paper towel if you need to pick up more paint so we don't have too much. Just showing a few strokes up top here. And kind of smooth those down. All right, so this is all I've done, very loose. Of course, I never mix up enough paint, so I kind of do that between each, each stroke. Let's go and define the, um, the, what would that be? The hip of the bunny? So just making that a little bit darker. Because that has dried, it's layering and it's naturally going to get darker. Again, now we will outline kind of down below here because that is also where another dark line will be with the shadow. And then down below here with a little bit of paint on our brush, let's just show a few little strokes of hair that are layered on top. Working our way towards the front legs here. We'll just do a few little strokes. And then show some coming down and around the bottom of the leg. You might wanna try and match that intensity of the color of the shadow, so it can always go back and add more. And then again, now I'll add some to the back and around the toe area just to help define that. Sometimes it's fun to show a little bit jetting off from the front of the chest here. Now this bunny painting in the DIY videos will be getting cut out um, for pretty much all but the cookie tags. So having kind of a raw um, straight edge is totally great with the bunny since it will get cut out. Okay, again, now we are back up into the face area. So let's start by doing a little bit of the crest of the eye, where like that eyebrow would be. Just a little tiny detail like that. We'll bring one down below again. And then let's do some shadowing around the face. So I'm just dropping little blocks of color in, not very 
um, heavy color and then I'll smooth it out. So you can tell I'm barely using any paint. And again, we'll take that little bit of paint and just do little strokes like this to give a little texture. Looks like I kind of missed some texture in the belly. I might go back and add that in here. Just so it doesn't look out of place. Just using that warm gray and brown mixture to add a few little hairs. Very transparent. Alright, so let's work our way up into the ears now. You guys are going to get so tired of the same color mixture, but I'm continuing with the Payne's Gray and the Brown. And then we will just go along the outline of that front ear, add a few little details to the bottom of the ear. even add a little outline to that. So again, if you see anything that you want to make darker, just if you have whatever little paint is on your brush, just continue to add it in places. Oh, I did not like that little ad, so I'm going to take my paper towel and mop it up. It's kind of like an eraser. Okay, so I would say that is pretty great before the final details are going to get added now. So super basic, little bunny here. Switching to the fine liner brush, this is what I'm going to do is add just a couple tiny details like the whisker, the little nose definition there, even outline the eye. So that will be mostly all done with the Payne's Gray. So picking up the Payne's Gray, it's okay if you get um, a good amount because we will do the darkest area first, which is the outline of the eye. So I'm just running that right along the outer edge. Using that same paint gray, let's just add that tiny little line to the nose. And then a little bit to the whiskers. You gotta make sure though that you're all dry on your base layers, otherwise you won't have control over these little whiskers, but I'm just going to do faint little lines. Now this whisker will get cut off on a couple of our projects, but if this is just going to get framed, I would add a few that kind of jet off. Can add a few into the ear here, just to add a little bit more depth and texture. Let's see, I even like to add a little bit more definition into the neck. And define the ears, the two ears here, a little bit. So these are just our final touches before I add in the white. So you just kind of look to find where the darkest areas are. So this crease here, just keep adding a little bit more darkness to it. This crease here, I like to do little like hair-like strokes just so it's not one straight line. Even take your paint gray and kind of outline the little bunny tail here. Okay, 
Okay, so again, here is the sketched out watercolor bunny so far. It looks like I need to add just a tiny little bit of hairs above the, the eye. And of course you can make yours as detailed as you wish. Just pull up a reference photo of a bunny. Um, but really these projects do not need a lot of detail. They'll get printed really small. So you won't need to see um, a lot of detail. Okay. Hoping you have this. If not, um, I really recommend getting some. Just ordering it. I get mine right off Amazon. Um, the blue proof wipe is what we will use to add in those little hairs everywhere. I think I'm going to switch to a little bit of a bigger fine liner, which is the size one instead of that triple zero. So I just grab a little bit and place it down onto my palette here, which is running out of space. I should clean it off, but you don't need a lot. So with a somewhat of a damp brush, don't want a ton of water. You just want to make it more of like a milky consistency, a thick milky consistency. Um, that way it'll glide really easily, but it'll still be very opaque when it layers on. You want to make sure that it's all nice and dry. So this is going to give the highlighted bunny hairs. So I'm going to add a little bit to the front of the nose here. Sometimes I like to take my finger and just dab it because if it gets too stark like that, you can add some details. If you lost um, the white around the eye, you could add a little detail there. I always like to add some into the ear. Using brush-like strokes to show kind of hair texture is the way to go. You can add some more into the highlighted whiskers. Just really light pressure. Want to show kind of the, the head overlapping that really dark area so the hairs will jet off and overlap that dark area. And we'll continue some down here into the chest. I really liked how that layered there, so I'm going to do the same thing. Just short little strokes. Just gonna add a little more hair texture to the face. I'm not going to do this everywhere. It's best just done in certain areas. So like down here to show the overlap, it's really great. The hair overlapping the leg like that. It does help to soften if you have any really harsh edges on watercolor, the way that it dries, it does help to soften it and disguise those harsh edges. So that's always a great way. So I'm just kind of going around the painting and I like the way that this little definition of the arm happens. So I'm going to add some right there. So you don't need a ton, but just a few little strokes around like this, just to show texture, like even that. It's kind of what I'm going for. So if that was too much, you can either use your finger to help mop it up a little bit or your paper towel. This is also great when if you lose the highlight of the eye, you can use this paint to add it back in. So 
Alright, so some subtle differences of my two bunnies, but again, they're just supposed to be pretty loose. And I, I can take another visit before. That's usually what I do with all my paintings um, before I scan them in. Is take a look at them, see what I want to add, what I want to soften. Um, but yeah, so this is the beginning of our DIY projects. So I will be uploading that YouTube video today and I will announce when it's ready and post it onto YouTube um, within the group here so that you can go and take a look. I'll include all of the supplies that you need for the DIY video uh, projects. Um, a lot of the supplies that I got were all from Amazon. So, of course, if you have Amazon Prime, they come super quickly and you'd be able to get them done before next weekend with Easter. Um, otherwise, what you really do need, though, is you do need an inkjet printer in order to do especially the iron-on um, DIY projects. Otherwise, any printer that you have at home would be perfect for the Easter tags. If you do little cookies, <laughs> I make a little bit of a joke. I am not a baker, so unfortunately, I don't talk about how to actually bake and decorate the cookies within the video. Um, I was graciously given these cookies, so uh, I could create this cute video. Um, but this would be so cute laying on a plate for your Easter lunch or dinner um, for your friends and family as well as if you're decorating your table. I think these are also really cute napkins that you would just put a little napkin ring um, in, over and lay them right on your plate. Okay, you guys, so I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. I will have the replay here um, to visit as well as on the YouTube channel. And please drop me any questions as you get started. And if you do the DIY projects, I would love to see um, your finished products. So send me a message or tag me over on Instagram at Windswept Design Studio. And I look so forward to seeing what you all create. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks so much for being here.